Today we are doing a video in a new neighborhood that I have never walked through before and honestly I don't even know what to call this. It's just Miami. It is literally just a block or two east of Biscayne Boulevard and it's south of Miami Shores. But there's no real like name for this neighborhood, at least not that I can tell anyways. So let's take a look. It looks like it's a little bit more affordable than the places we usually walk through. Maybe we'll actually see some houses here that are under a million dollars. Now we have covered several return to the office stories since they started happening roughly the beginning of last year. And now the latest company to announce their reversal of policy when it comes to working in the office is Redfin, the real estate company. And obviously a lot of people aren't happy about this. And one thing that the CEO, Glenn Kelman, was even questioned about, is this designed to make people quit? Because you see a lot of companies that are using this tactic to try and make people quit. I think the last time we talked about this, it was LendingTree that was using this exact strategy to intentionally try and get their employees to quit because if they quit, they don't have to pay unemployment, saves the company a ton of money, and accomplishes the same goal of lowering their workforce. And apparently, the new policy at Redfin is going to be that all employees who live within a 20-mile radius of one of their headquarter offices in San Francisco or Seattle need to return to the office by July 11th, two days a week. Here's what the CEO has to say about this. He says that the biggest reason for this change is that he's feeling like it's easier for people to get to know each other and be more productive and it's hard to form new relationships when you don't see people in person. So if people need to come into the office, it's going to be easier to get things done and have conversations about, you know, tough decisions that need to be made right away rather than try to do an online meeting with somebody or something like that, right? But of course, one thing that they don't acknowledge here is how the real estate industry hasn't been doing so good over the past year or so, and they likely need to get people to quit because they've already laid off people, okay? Redfin has already gone through several rounds of layoffs in 2022, and this could be a tactic to get people to quit, but of course, they're never gonna come out and admit that. And it's not like Redfin is alone. You've already seen a lot of the other big tech companies do a big 180 on their remote work policy. Apple did it, Amazon did it, Disney did it, Starbucks did it, and they were all cool with remote work before, but now that things are pretty much back to normal, they're not so cool with it anymore. But I will say that they're actually treating their people that move far away with some favoritism here because this new rule only requires people who live within 20 miles of one of their headquarters to come into the office two days a week. But if you live further away than that, then you luck out and you only need to return to the office for headquarter meetings four times a year. So once a quarter, you need to be in the office for that and that's about it. So that's a pretty good improvement for somebody that doesn't want to actually be in the office. If you moved away and uh, say, I don't live in the area anymore, you're, you're getting pretty lucky. You only got to fly in four times a year. But I personally wouldn't be surprised if this is a tactic to try and get people to quit because that's probably one of the easiest ways to do it. Although, if you are one of the people that live within 20 miles of the office and you're crying about going in two days a week, I mean, what's the big deal, really, guys? I mean, you're still working from home three days a week, and if you're doing the five-day work week, you got those extra two days off, so you're still gonna be at home most of the time. It doesn't really seem like that big of a deal for people to actually quit over this. And you're better off being a Redfin employee right now than Amazon because the Amazon layoffs that were announced a couple months back just started on Monday, and they're getting rid of Another 9,000 people, guys, across their Twitch division, their web services division, and their advertising division. It looks like 2023 is easily going to be the year of the layoff here because we're seeing so many companies do layoffs in this first quarter already, and you know the year's just getting started still. Now, another thing that we talk about a lot here on the channel besides remote work are the mobile home parks that are getting taken over by developers and kicking people out or pushing up the rents to unaffordable levels and i always tell people in those videos like hey 
it's better off if you're going to live in a mobile home, you need to own the land that the mobile home sits on. And that's to prevent something like this from happening to you. Well, there was a story out of Palm Beach, Florida, where they have a small mobile home park called Briny Breezes. It's a 43 acre park and they have about 488 mobile homes on the island. It's in a waterfront pristine location, being that it's an island. They got an offer from Related Group for about $500 million. And these guys basically laughed at their proposal and said, absolutely not. And good for them. These developers are going around and trying to buy land on the cheap or old buildings on the cheap, thinking that people are desperate for money and are just gonna walk away from all of it. But these people at Briny Breezes are smart for a couple of reasons. Number one, they own the land their mobile home sits on. It's like a co-op situation, so they all own shares in the co-op. And this would have been a big deal. I mean, these guys would have gotten about $1 million per person that own these plots there. So that's not a bad deal when you're talking, you know, a purchase for a mobile home park. But the reason that they rejected it is because they actually got a better offer all the way back in 2007, even before the last housing crash, they had an offer to sell the place for $510 million. What ended up happening back then is 2008 rolled around and the housing market started to crash. So Related Group pulled the offer back then and said, yeah, we're not uh, gonna be <laughs> buying this place anymore. So these people are now getting the same offer, if not actually a little bit less, 16 years later. So no wonder they turned it down. But that's exactly the point, guys. In the past, when we've covered this, it usually affects people in a much more adverse way because what usually will happen is people rent the land in a mobile home park and then there's like one owner you have one company or person that owns the entire park and they end up selling it to one of these developers because you know from their point of view 500 million dollars for one person is a whole lot more than a million for one person so for them a deal like this it sounds amazing so they sell it and wham you get hit with a rent increase that's 40 50 percent higher even more in some cases or they just flat out tell you you gotta go you can't live here anymore we're turning this into condos the reason i'm bringing this story up is to show people the difference of how things can turn out in your favor when you own the land that your mobile home sits on versus people that don't you know these people actually have some real say in the matter and who knows maybe they'll get a better offer maybe somebody will come back with a billion dollars not very likely but hey anything's possible because these guys are essentially trying to pick up this plot of land for less than what another company was willing to pay for it 16 years ago and that doesn't even factor in things like inflation property appreciation anything like that so you got to really be careful with these offers. And this is something that's even happening in Miami Beach where I live. There's a building called Castle Beach Club and they offered the people that own in this building $500 million as well to buy their four acre plot of oceanfront land. It says that they're considering the offer. I have no idea if the owners of this place are gonna take it or not. The people at Castle Beach will end up receiving even less than the people in this mobile home park because there's 570 units there and they're offering the same price. So people will end up with less than a million each to sell one of these condos. But you know, at the same time, if the building is facing massive special assessments to come into compliance with the new condo laws that are going to go into effect in 2025, and it's just like this huge mountain to climb, it might make more sense for these condo owners to let go of the building and walk away with a sizable profit versus just saying no and taking the chance that they're going to be able to fix everything for less than what they could sell all these properties for just something to keep in mind if you live in a condo that gets a buyout or you live in one of these mobile home parks that gets a buyout now another thing to keep in mind is property tax increases this is another thing that i've been hammering home on the channel lately because so many people are unaware of the fact that when you buy a home it doesn't matter what the previous owner was paying in property taxes. And unfortunately, when you go to buy the property, 
your loan is approved based on what the current owner's paying on property taxes, not what you will be paying in the future when the property gets reassessed, as well as the fact that even when you're looking on sites like Zillow or Redfin, doesn't matter, any real estate website, when it shows the property taxes of a property that you're interested in, that is the amount that the current owner's paying, okay? That is not the amount that you're gonna be paying once the value of the property gets reassessed. There's a story today out of Dallas, Texas with the harsh reality of this because there's a woman there that bought a property not too long ago, doesn't say how long ago, probably within the last year, and her property is getting reassessed and the county is increasing the value $100,000. And if, in case you don't know, Texas has one of the highest property tax rates in the entire country, if not the highest, I believe. So anytime they reassess the value of your property, particularly in Texas, your property tax bill is probably set to go up a lot. Now this lady says she plans to protest her new appraisal of the property because it went up so much. She basically has 30 days to do this. Anybody who gets this new property tax bill over there in Dallas has 30 days to contest this and you can do things like come up with comps, submit the uh, condition of the property, especially if it has problems like foundational issues, roof issues, anything that would detract from the value of the property, you're supposed to submit to the county appraiser within 30 days to see if they will give you a break or not. And ultimately, of course, the decision is up to them whether or not they're gonna give you any sort of break. If you're facing a huge increase in property taxes, at least you can try. You can try to reason with them and submit reasons why you think that your property taxes shouldn't be as high as they are. They're pretty strict over there, guys. If you go past the 30 days and you don't submit everything within that time frame, then that's it. You're stuck with that tax bill for the year and there's not gonna be any adjustments. Probably have to wait until the following year to contest it again. So this is one of those things where time is of the essence in order to try and get your bill lowered. But ultimately, I don't think a lot of people are gonna be successful with this because you know most people aren't gonna buy a house that is in terrible condition to begin with. And if this woman just bought the house, then chances are it's mostly okay, probably is worth the extra value. And she's probably just gonna have to take the tax hit. The reason why people are upset about this is because they didn't see it coming. Like if you knew when you were gonna buy the house that your property tax bill might go up by 20 or 50%, then you would probably reevaluate how much you would spend on the house, what your monthly budget is going to look like in the, in the following year after you buy the property. But so many people don't know this, guys. And that's why I keep hammering this in multiple videos. So if you've heard me say this several times already and you're getting sick of it, I'm gonna keep saying it because so many people don't know. And this is a really big deal right now because of home prices still being close to all time highs in many different areas. And because of that, people are gonna be paying record high property taxes as well. So if you look at a house that was purchased 20 years ago for 150 grand, and the current owner is paying $2,200 a year in property taxes, and you're gonna buy the house for half a million, you know, your property taxes are probably gonna be well over 10 grand a year. And that's just something that people are not thinking about when they're going out and buying. Everyone focuses on the interest rate. You know, you have people crying that the interest rates are too high and we're not gonna buy anything until the rates dip back below 5.5%. Okay, great. But that's not the most important part of the real estate transaction. The price you pay for the house is. It always has been and it always will be. People that are just going out there and jumping into the market with these prices and these rates, all I got to say to you is I hope you know what you're doing. I hope you know how much your increases are gonna go up by. Don't forget about homeowner's insurance either, guys, because the more your home is worth, the more you're gonna pay in homeowner's insurance as well. Now, I think one of the biggest concerns about people paying top dollar for homes today that's also not really being talked about that much is 
the changing shift that's coming with demographics over the next couple of decades. We talked about a similar story to this in Australia a couple of days ago, and we're gonna be facing the same thing here in the United States because today's young people are just not having nearly as many kids as in the past, and one of these days, that's going to catch up with us. And I mean, I'm one of them, guys. I'm in my mid-30s, I don't have any kids, you know? If I never had to worry about money or never had to think about how am I going to feed or take care of my kids, I might have had kids 10 years ago and not even thought a second thing about it. But kids are very expensive and it's a huge commitment in a lot of different ways. But anyhow, according to some recent data, 51% of millennials across the United States own their own home now, which finally hit over the majority. But that still means that close to half of them don't own their own home. Over the next decade, it is predicted that a lot of baby boomers are gonna start aging out of their current homes and are going to want to sell these properties. And the question becomes, who is going to buy those properties? Some people think that this is gonna to lead to an excess in housing inventory, which could end up causing another housing crash in the future. I have mixed feelings about this because on the one hand, the demographic thing is a concern, but when you look at all the corporate investment that we see in real estate these days, and unless anything is done to stifle that, there's no reason to think it might stop. So that's a new buyer in the game that wasn't there before that could come in and pick up some of these excess properties, but also the millennials that don't own homes right now pick up those properties in the future. You know, the decade's not that long away. You know, people that can't afford to buy one now, if home prices come down in the next 10 years, maybe those other half of millennials that wish they could buy something will actually start buying when prices are down to more realistic levels. And the crazy thing to think about is thinking about real estate prices being lower in 10 to 15 years from now than they are today. Because that's just not the traditional track that real estate prices track with. When you look at the long running history of home prices, we have dips and you know the crash in 2008, but you don't see home prices go down over a long period of time. That's just not something that we've seen historically, but we probably also have never seen this huge decline in population historically either. But the prediction is that today's baby boomers, which will be tomorrow's senior citizens, will be adding so much inventory to the housing market in the next 10 to 15 years that it'll put inventory levels 40% higher than where they're at today. This is also why I think this whole idea that there's a housing shortage out there is a complete lie because when you look at stories like this, it really paints the real picture of the fact that there are plenty of homes out there. It's just that at this moment in time, not that many of them are for sale but it will not remain that way forever, guys. And even properties that get passed down to the next generation, a lot of times those don't stay in the hands of the new owner either. Look at what happened to this property from the other day. I showed you guys a real world example in Miami Beach of a property that was transferred to the heirs of probably a deceased owner and their property taxes went up substantially and they're now delinquent on those property taxes and they're trying to sell this house with massive price cuts already because they can't afford it. So you're likely to see that happen a lot, even with inherited properties. And a lot of the other times, people just want out. They just want the money, you know? If they receive a large inheritance, people don't want someone else's old house. They'd rather just, you know, sell it, take the money and go. And I also think if there is a glut of inventory in the next, say, 10 to 15 years, it could be an opportunity for people that want to invest in real estate, like myself, to pick up properties at bargains and rent them out to people because eventually there's going to be new people that want to come in and rent the place and you know as long as the purchase price makes sense along with what you can get in rent you know it doesn't really matter if you're renting the place for 500 bucks a month you know if you can pick it up for 100 grand so it all depends on the numbers on what properties are selling for in the future that can still make real estate a good investment because to me it's all about the return and I think 
there's always going to be a return because you're, you're always going to have people that need a place to live, guys. That's one of the best reasons to invest in real estate is because it is a human necessity, okay? It's just like owning water rights or owning a part of the, the food supply, you know? It's just an essential part of human existence that we're always going to need as long as there's people around. And of course, our country is not shy to a bunch of immigrants coming in here, whether legally or not, and I'm sure they'll be part of taking up some of that new housing supply as well. So there's always people to come in and take the place of someone else. So that's kind of like the lesson to be learned from this. And I think it will be good. I think it's going to be a great thing to see a large glut of inventory finally hit the market and suppress prices to levels that make it affordable for people. To me, that's fantastic news. If you're worried about home prices today because everything is too high and you're scared to buy, you don't want to lose value, maybe wait another 10 to 15 years, especially if you're younger and you have that time window to wait and you're still going to be young enough to purchase a home where it makes sense because there could be a lot more opportunity in the near future. But then again, use your own judgment, guys. That's just a simple prediction. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. You just got to do some thinking for yourself. I'm just here to assist you with that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the bell notification down below. YouTube will alert you every time I post a new video. And if you don't want to wait, check out my next one on the screen right over here and I'll see you in the next one.